Okay, so we have some uh, TNA signees, or former TNA signees of WWE. Uh, one, Jeremy Borash. I knew he did a lot, not until I started reading that he worked for WCW in 99 to 2001. He worked with things like uh, World Wrestling All-Stars. He worked with TNA for the better part of like 15, 16 years, being on-air talent as an interviewer, as play-by-play. He did lots of from a social media standpoint. He actually ran shows. He was a booker. He did. Uh, he did. He was a producer. He also was did a lot of the writing too. He was on the creative staff. So pretty much, he was one of the members that held TNA together. And then find out more about him. I was like, okay, so he kind of fits that. I can do everything mold. And I was like, that almost makes him kind of like a Paul Heyman-esque character. Because he can be an on-air personality, she can play the play. He can book, write, produce. And, and lots of social media stuff. Maybe they plan on doing more things like a Mix Max Challenge Facebook Live. Or Facebook Watch Live, whatever it's called. I'm almost 40, I don't know. Uh, I just click on the Facebook and I type in Mix Max Challenge and I watch. It might be good for them to do things like that, or help produce more of the show as they do for YouTube, some of the more W Network things. He might also work pretty well too when it comes to NXT. But they have a lot of TNA talent, so he is. And I thought I'm like, he's, he's a good kid. Good kid. Then I read more, and I'm like, whoa, he's a great guy. He's oh man, he can bring a great perspective. I think he can do some fantastic things. And then. The 205 Live General Manager, Rockstar, Drake Maverick. Smart that I think it was, uh, I want to say Vic Grimes, but that's not it. It was, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was Vic Jones. I think Vic Grimes. I think Frank Grimes. Grimey. Smith, Simpsons. Anyways. And he was like, formerly known as Rockstar Spud. And I was like, good, good, get out, just get it out of the way. Just be done with it. So, Drake Maverick. Better than Drake Goose. It's a strong name. I like the very bright colors. My first thought was, man, if they still had Enzo, you would have two guys who are both small. You know, like cruiserweight size. That can wear bright colors. And can both do micro we can both do mic work. His first thing to do is win a new champion. 32 man single elimination term. Taking guys from the UK division, 205, NXT. Yes, please. And thank you. Culminating with the one on match at WrestleMania. Probably pre show. Would I have rather seen maybe like a six or eight person ladder match just really get the crowd just amped up? Which, you know what? A solid one on one match would be pretty good too. Especially when they're taking the UK guys, they're taking NXT guys. So it's kind of like, hmm, we've got a lot of guys who are under 205 pounds. We're doing a lot with them? Not really. So I just. A bunch of them show up at SmackDown, do a bit. Yeah. Let's let's utilize the talent we've got. The price tag going. Here's what we've got. We got a lot of guys. We can have some really unique matches and be like, you know what? Maybe if Roderick Strong, if you don't, if we can't get you to go really higher in NXT, which might do two or five live. And frequently, you know, we can run you and do some stuff, like the UK guys. Are you trying to tell me that Pete Dunne dual wielding the UK and the Cruiserweight title wouldn't kind of elevate both a little bit? The same. And I love that in his back he was like, yeah, he does great stuff. What are you going to do for me now? Fix it in the ring. Good. I, I like how he has that. It's kind of the way William Regal does things in NXT. But I want to. You want to be a number contender? Go in a match in the ring. We'll talk later. I almost hope one of my big things I wish they really would have done for 205 Live to make it feel as different as possible. 
it's a small enough roster you start from zero. Actually having worked in wins and losses matter. If you're the guy in the back, how come I'm not, how come I'm not in the number one championship match? In your last five matches, yeah? How many have you won? So right, you're one and four. One and four. People are in that ring, they're the winners. Start racking up some wins, maybe you get to be in a number one contendership spot. That, that way that's pretty easy. You want to do a, a couple matches here and there in the course of a month? Have a heel go out, he's got a losing record? Have him call the person with the worst record that he has. You've got a, a face that's kind of floundering? Open challenge. Take on anybody. Maybe you've got a heel that's like, I think I can beat him. If I beat him, he goes down, I move up. But then actually make that one of the hallmarks of the 205 Live division. Wins and losses count. Where you're at in the pecking order. It'd be a nice reset after WrestleMania, but you know, here's the champion, here's how you dead it out in the tournament. Let's me know where you are. You want to get a title shot? You want a number of connection match? Here's the people that, here's where you rank at. Get out of this pack. Move your way up. So I'm really excited about that. They got some nice things. It could really help invigorate 205, which definitely, definitely needs it. And I think this this tournament works also works really well with the mixed match challenge match. Because you've got that going on, that's about a half an hour. You can do two matches, and all of a sudden you're pretty much ready at WrestleMania for your main shot. Maybe a match here or there on uh, on Raw, build interest to it. Cool. They've got some really good, solid talent. And ironically, Rockstar Spud, already on TV, already doing something, already making it happen. Jeremy Borash, I'm looking forward to see how well they utilize him.